right, hey guys, RC Peck here with Fearless Wealth, and we've got a lot going on this week. I'm recording this Thursday after the market has closed, and what you see on the screen here is the value line arithmetic, <laughs> arithmetic, arithmetic index. It's the index no one has ever heard of. It's basically the original equal weighted index. So when this thing goes up, it gives you a better view of the overall stock market, how it's doing, right? It's not measured on cap um, market weight. It's just equally weighted across all the stocks and it's making a new lifetime high. It's also an index, so there are no dividends included in this. So look, when an index makes a new high and a lifetime high, it's a pretty big deal. and actually looks like it's about to break out to another new high. So what I want to do is just show a couple indexes around the planet. You have the Nikkei, which is the Japanese index. Now this is super zoomed in to three and a half years, but that right there is not a new lifetime high. That's a new 25-ish year high, maybe a little bit more. The Nikkei topped out in 1989 and hasn't seen but it has finally broken above its 25 year high, which guys is a pretty big deal. That's a quarter century. Now here's what's crazy. It still needs to go another 50% higher to break out to new lifetime highs. And it's very likely uh, it will do that, but that is absolutely strength. You have the Indian Nifty 50 index. That's at new lifetime highs. Rarely talk about India, but that is near, uh, that is new lifetime highs. The DAX, which is German, the German index is really doing its best. This is all in local currencies, guys. All these indexes are in local currencies, so there's no dollar impact, and that's doing its best to get up to new lifetime highs. But then when we look at actual ETFs that you can buy, this is the Vanguard FTSE All World XUS. So basically this is all the stock markets in the world XUS. So it does not count the US stock market. And that is making new lifetime highs looking like it wants to move higher. We then have, I thought it'd be fun to just show you this Bible-based ETF. So there's an ETF that uh, buys companies that have a Bible-based focus or pass a filter of the person who manages this Inspire 100 ETF. So not only is that at new lifetime highs, but it made new lifetime highs in October and September, and of course back in February of this year. Uh, what's interesting about this Bible-based index is it's been outperforming the U.S. stock market since August. Uh, I should say it's been outperforming the S&P 500 since August of last year. So even Bible-based um, stocks are also making new lifetime highs. So it's interesting, right? We have to, we don't have to, you don't have to study price. You don't have to believe that price is moving higher. But what I find is when you really understand how important the movement of price is and how when price moves higher, your portfolio moves higher, it really, st really starts to get you to want to think like, okay, how can I think more about price? How can I understand price more? So a couple more I want to show you. Uh, this is a 2X S&P 500 fund divided by a 1X. So it's pretty hard for this to go higher, but if this price chart is above those two blue lines, kind of that zone in there, that means the S&P 500 is strengthening. And in fact, this is moving higher. Anything above the blue area means the S&P is strengthening. And that's what's happening. So my craziest, I got <laughs> my craziest symbol I'm going to show you. Uh, and it's one that I, I think is going to surprise everyone. And to me, this is the power of, uh, of getting trained and, 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 and um, praying to the altar of price and really understanding how price impacts your portfolio. But this, this is interesting because I live in Washington State and we just got orders on Monday that we're shutting down a lot of things. Um, and a lot of the parts of the other parts of the country are and a lot of the parts of the world are also. But here is an ETF it's called the Spiders S&P Retail ETF. So this is an ETF that owns offline 
bricks and mortar retail. That's right. Amazon's not in here. Uh, this is a bricks and mortar and it is making new lifetime highs in a way that even the other things I've shown you um, on this week's video are not. But to me, this is the power of price. So the market and the market is the 700 richest people on the planet. There's about seven, 7.7 .7 billion people. So we're looking at the richest people on the planet collectively voting, right? And there's just such consensus and such intelligence when you really know how to truly poll, right? <laughs> is, is anyone really following the polling numbers anymore? I mean, in 2016, polling numbers were completely wrong. And in 2020, polling numbers were completely wrong. But this isn't polling. This is what's actually happening. This is better than polls. This is better than surveys. This is what actually is going on where people are actually putting their money. And all things being equal, I want to have my money on something that is going up and to the right. I want up and to the right because that's how portfolios are grown. So very, very interesting. And I'm sure I'm, I didn't dig into it, but I'm sure Target is in here making new lifetime highs right there. Targets both online and offline. Costco, I'm sure is one of the components in here too. Home Depot, I'm sure is one of the components in here, which that one is just digesting. But still, we have to go with what is actually happening and not what we want to happen. The market is smarter than us. And then we do still have the online. This is iBuy, so this is online retailers close to making a new lifetime high. We have the internet um, index fund here close to making another new lifetime high. So things are going higher. You may not believe, first of all, it's not about believing when you can actually see what's going higher and is actually going higher. No, the bond market is not crashing, but is definitely underperforming the stock market. Interesting enough, the international bond market, which is what is on the screen, is outperforming the US domestic bond market. Another point to understanding how to read price charts, know how to invest your money, um, because you don't want to be over diversified. Over diversified slows the growth of your money. Guys, I'm pretty excited. I got a trading, trading workshop coming up. Super, super fun. It's something I've never um, taught anyone before, but you know, I want it to be fun. And if you've seen some of my emails over last week, um, I just told a story about being divorced and being a single dad. And, and you know, it, it can be kind of traumatic, it, not necessarily starting over, but when you have to more than split your assets um, and then get a house and renovate a house and build a house and a home so your kids love it and you love it. Um, I was like, you know, I remember hearing about how Google X thinks and they don't think like to make something 10% better or 20% better. They want to make something 10x better. And so that got me thinking last year. It's like, wait a second. I don't have to pay for all my renovation. I don't have to pay for my brand new car. I bought a brand new car, paid it off immediately with cash. I don't need to pay for any of that. I can actually have the stock market pay for it. And I just kept thinking about this 10x thing. And you know, the, the really gen, general rough number of the market is the market does about nine or 10% a year. And so I just thought like, what if I just did 10% a month? Like what if I 10x'd it and did 10% a month? And so that's what I did at this, uh, during the second half of last year. I took 300,000 of my brokerage. I said, let's have fun. Let's do what I know how to do. And let's make some money so I don't have to pay for any of my own renovations. I renovated my whole house, redid all the landscaping. I won't have to pay for my own brand new car. Uh, let the market pay for it. And so that's what I did. It was super fun. It wasn't stressful. I didn't spend a lot of time doing it either. Um, and one of the things I did at training this week, one of the things I talked about is how when people trade, they, 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 more, they more like they collect they don't put the right amount of money in the symbols. And one of the things that I knew to do, again, I've been training people for 22 years, but once I have a winning symbol, right? 
what I started doing was just loading more money into the symbol, putting more money in and more money in because it's like you have a winner and you want to start putting more and more money into that winner. It's counterintuitive because you're taught to be scared. You're taught to have 50 symbols. You're taught to do all these things that actually don't help you. But I started layering in more money and cutting the other symbols that were doing okay. And what I noticed is it takes a different mindset when you have a symbol moving maybe 10 or 15% in a day. Um, you have to start thinking about it differently. And what I noticed is when you started layering in more and more money to your winning symbol or symbols, you start making more money. And so it was super fun. I did a training about it. If you're curious about it, there should be a recording of it in the uh, show notes, in the comments. And also if you're on my email list, it's, on, uh, it's in the PS. So hope you like that. It's super fun. Uh, it's symbols I've never talked about, approach I've never talked about, and really that mindset of how, how you have to get comfortable. I, I know this sounds kind of funny, but getting comfortable with making 10 or 15% in a day is very different than um, being com comfortable in making maybe one or two or maybe even 3% a day. Uh, but that's what I noticed starts happening when you when you kind of start this, this trading approach that uh, I'm going to be teaching. So thanks guys for being in my world. I appreciate it. Please leave a comment. I read all comments. I delete all horrible comments. Um, what also really helps is to subscribe to the channel and um, to give a thumbs up because those things make a difference. So thanks for being in my world. And again, this is RC Peck. I will see you on the next video. Okay, bye.